Nice. He opened the door and I looked at him and he goes, you remember me? <laughs> Cool. Bobby's attempting to make a sandwich. Yeah, I'm actually a good Should I get the brakes? I'll save that. Me pour a drink while Colt and Sophie are <laughs> playing guitar back to the back. Anyway. There were some neat waterfalls. Water shooting out of the yeah. side. It's a lot of icicles. Uh -huh. You have a pretty decent zoom on there, don't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to get them way up there. Look, Hunter, this one's moving. See it? There goes. Big one. Yeah, big one. That's called a stingray. <laughs> they are birdies. Hold up. Hey. Look at the fresh water. I thought we were in the ocean, Billy. Yeah. I guess they're freshwater stingrays. I don't know. I guess there's. I don't know. You stopped me. Curious. I got no idea. Yeah, no, you're right. Can you touch it? Uh, oh, where he's going? Then you saw the macaws and the angel. Then you're touching the stingrays, and then you'll go in and touch some butterflies. We get about a thousand butterflies every week oh, no. in the mail. Then they emerge in the it's window, a, no, and then they release them every day. So we've got a thousand live butterflies for you. Thank you. 
and Grace and then take off one. That is, those are amazing big giant catfish. Oh wow, look at that big fish, Hunter. It looks like prehistoric. Yes, it is. These guys are bottom feeders, just like catfish. They eat whatever is on the bottom of a river or a lake. They eat little crabs, and whatever they can kind of come across. <laughs> Are you having fun? <laughs> Did you have fun? Yeah. Camping in a camper? Yeah. Yeah? You said you had a good night and stayed warm? Yeah. Yeah? What about you? You're a bit. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. Mom's here. You're over there. <laughs> you know that. No, I can't see. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty neat campground. A tip bag. Mm-hmm. The cave up the hill. It's Dave. Mm hmm. Oh, look oh. you there. Hi, Miss Anna Grayson. And me too. And you too. Hi. Hey, this is Dave. This is Dave. Get closer to me, mommy. Hey, this is Dave. Hey, this is Dave. Give me five. <laughs> he says, What you doing, brother? I don't do anything. Not doing anything? Yeah, Jim. Uh, canning. Pretty neat. <laughs> what? We see pigs on me walking. Yeah. There's one of the old sky cars, I think. Yeah, the cable, oh, that's cable car. Cable car. Okay. Uh huh. A big thing, Bobby. Cable car used to go up, I guess. Way up the mountain. So if everybody looks over here on this wall, you'll see the stone and concrete that has been filled in across here. And this was the original entrance to the cave. Uh, back a long time ago, uh, farmers used to work on this land with the campground and everything was here. And they'd come up and sit next to this entrance and get cooled off by the air that is blown out of it. And how that works is there are some top entrances in the cave, and air is sucked into those entrances, and then cooled off by the rocks to about 60 degrees. And that air is then blown out of what once was this entrance here, so it's kind of like a natural air conditioner. Uh, like I said, the farmers would sit next to it and get cooled off. And then they realized that the cave system was back here, so they called the local cave explorer. His name was Leo Lambert. 
And he crawled through this little belly crawl here and discovered the cave and opened it up for tours in 1931. So we've been going for a uh, Pretty long time now. So this is the Crystal Palace room, and this is the third largest room in the cave, and it's also the oldest room since it has the most formations in it. But like most caves in the southeast, this is a limestone cave, so the rock is all made of limestone. And how caves are formed is water will seep through the soil up above us and collect carbon dioxide. Pretty neat thing here, there is a bat. It's kind of hanging out up here. Like I guess they usually don't, oh, yeah. don't come up front, mainly because they don't like the, uh, the lights and all the people. But it's pretty rare for them to come up here. Huh. Just chilling. So look, he was, he was right here uh, yesterday. What is it? Now he moved it's over. It's a bat. Right here. Is it normal for there just to be one? Well, up here, yeah, because sometimes they'll just venture oh. off and wow, that's tiny. and I'll fly up here. I don't see it, do you? But back in the cave, they're usually together. You like to hiccup? So here we are at the Hall of Dreams.
<laughs> was that fun? Yeah. They just turned my other back. Was Daddy a bad driver? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bad driver. We're doing three times here. Come on, play. Here they go. That's right. There's tracks. Yeah, there's tracks. You following the tracks, Hunter? <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Above sea level. The car in which you're riding was installed in March 1987. Each car is steel and was especially built for the end at an 18 degree angle. Each car is 42 feet long and weighs 12 tons. Two one and a quarter inch wire cables carry the incline cars up and down the mountain. You should feel more comfortable about your ride knowing that the cables have a combined strength of 142 tons. The cables are fastened underneath one car, wound around huge drums in the machine room at the top of the mountain, and connected underneath the other car, so that the two cars operate like weights on a pulley. When one car goes up, the other car comes down. The entire cable system is changed every three years. Other safety features include an Otis Elevator Safety Governor, which automatically locks the cars down if their speed goes above 10 miles per hour. A giant automatic brake in the incline's machine room, which will lock down the cars in case of a power failure. And manual brakes for use by the operators. In recognition of the incline's historically significant role and unique mechanical design, in 1974, it was designated a National Historic Site by the United States Department of the Interior. And in 1991, a National Historic Mechanical Engineering Landmark by the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. The incline began making history on November 16, 1895, when the first car reached the crest of the mountain. What? That car was made of wood with open windows that gave passengers an exhilarating feeling. The steepest point near the top is 72.7%, giving the incline the unique distinction of being the steepest passenger railway in the world. When we reach the top, visit our observation decks, the highest observation points on Lookout Mountain, for a breathtaking view of the Chattanooga Valley. Do you see our camper down there, Hunter? Mm -hmm. It's all the way at the bottom. We're way up here on Lookout Mountain. Hunter, don't put your feet through there. Yeah. Huh. All right, I'm gonna zoom in on our camper. Look how steep this incline railway is. Yeah. And then look down. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty steep. I'll see the. It's like a school track. The train car all the way at the other end. Don't put your feet in there. And then our camper. He's right there. Yeah. Hunter! It's neat. See the track? Yeah. Let you see the tree for here. Yeah, <laughs> 
Incline railways have played an important role in the historical development of Lookout Mountain. The first incline was completed in 1887 as a means of travel to the scenic area just below the point atop the mountain. In 1888, Point Hotel, a lavish four-story inn with an unequal view, opened to the public at the top of the first incline. The hotel was a splendid charter forming the Lookout Mountain Incline and Blue Lake Railway Company. With the help of picks, shovels, dynamite, and about a thousand workers, the first cars began traveling up and down the mountain on November 16, 1895.